We're now going to look at the unimolecular elimination reaction, which is the E equivalent of the SN1. So we call it the E1. The unimolecular reaction mechanism is a multi-step mechanism, very similar to the way that the SN1 mechanism was a multi-step mechanism. In the E1 reaction, the first step is that the leaving group leaves. We technically say it dissociates from the substrate. It comes off of the substrate. That creates a carbocation at alpha. Now, the significance of this is that this carbocation can and will rearrange if it becomes more stable. If rearrangement occurs, then we move the location of the carbocation in the skeleton and that new carbocation location becomes a new alpha carbon. The old carbon, alpha carbon, is no longer alpha. Once we have our carbocation where it wants to be, we call that alpha, we look at the adjacent carbons and find hydrogens. So these would be beta hydrogens. Base will remove a beta hydrogen, the pair of electrons will flow down toward the empty space on the alpha carbon and make a double bond. And we will get, as a byproduct, base with hydrogen attached. This is a multi-step reaction. We can write it in a one-line version where in the first step, with the first arrow, the leaving group leaves. Then in the second step, we have a base that removes the hydrogen and makes the double bond. Now, the significance of this is that the first step is exactly the same first step as we saw in our SN1 reaction in the previous section. So, what we find then is that SN1 and E1 generally always occur together. And there's generally always a mixture of SN1 and E1 products. This occurs basically because the substrate can do either reaction. When the leaving group leaves, it, uh, it makes a carbocation, which we have no direct control over. It's just already in the reaction mixture. And so the carbocation has a choice of reactions to do. It could go down one fork here and make a double bond doing E1, or it could go down another fork where a nucophile comes in and connects, makes a, an SN1 product. Again, the carbocation can rearrange, and we're just going to assume that our preferred products come from the rearranged carbocation when that is appropriate. This one always follows Zaitsev's rule. The most substituted double bond is preferred. We don't really have a Hoffman equivalent of this reaction. And finally, there is no stereoselectivity. Instead, what we're going to get is a mixture of both cis and trans isomers. There's no requirement for anti-periplanar alignment.